What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Talking Markets. My name is Trevor. I'm here joined with Brian. Brian, how are you doing? Doing great, man. Uh, it's been a couple weeks. Sorry for everyone that we missed uh, last week, but we're back at it today and we've got a lot of good topics here. So um, yep. I'm excited yep. to hear what, what's going on on your side. Definitely, definitely. So yeah, I'll just go down this main uh, talking point and then Brian, you'll take over. So first things first is yesterday, Coinbase kind of came out with this cryptic uh, tweet of the, just this blue dot. Um, and some were even speculating that this could be some type of partnership with Optimism considering optimism is like the red dot of the crypto community. Um, and well, that happens to be true because Coinbase is building its own Ethereum layer two network called Base. And also um, it basically just says, you know, they're planning to have a full ecosystem of dApps uh, built on it. And also this is, wait, give me a second. And also base will be a roll up agnostic super chain powered by optimism. So this was why optimism was rallying over, you know, 15% today. Um, so definitely good news for optimism, good news for Coinbase and of course base and new product. So Brian, let's see what you have to you know, showcase for us today. Of course. So share my screen here. As far as markets we can always start with bitcoin and stable coins in terms of shark and whale accumulation um, this has quickly grown into being one of my single favorite charts here uh, as it really shows where the money is going over time you can see since the beginning of last year there was this huge drop off in bitcoin addresses uh, that hold 10 to 10,000 bitcoin going down and down and down and then right around late november just about three months ago to the day we finally started to see a bit of a rise and a little accumulation followed by a drop after prices rose here uh, about a month ago, January 2022. Uh, that's when their addresses started to go down again. And even with Bitcoin making that final push at 25K, we saw, um, you know, the addresses really being stagnant at best. They hold about 67.05% now versus about 70.86% a year ago. So yeah, they're, they're still about almost 4% down compared to where they were one year ago. However, a little bit up since uh, late November. So there's a positive sign there. A more positive sign is the fact that stable coins are continuing to move up. Um, you can see Tether here in red. Uh, this is DAI here in yellow and then USD coin in blue. Now, USD coin's gone through a weird shift over the past 10 days or so, where it's actually going down a bit. Um, and arguably, uh, DAI has kind of picked up the slack a little bit. Uh, some have even argued that it's just been going straight into the markets, and that was why we had this, this little push uh, over the past 10 days to 25K. Uh, you can also see BUSD down here in orange. Uh, they were a big story. They had... Uh, an SEC lawsuit uh, filed against them a couple weeks ago uh, for essentially being an unregistered security. Uh, Paxos, the owner of them, is technically the one getting sued. But BUSD, uh, from what I remember, Trevor, you said that they they were dropped from a key uh, staking service, correct? Um, yeah, I believe so. Um... Yeah. You know, it just seems like at this point, the SEC is just calling everything a security. Right. You know. Exactly. Depending on convenience uh, for themselves. So, yeah, I, I think, um, you know, based on this, uh, BUSD has taken a hit. And that's always a bit scary when it's the native token associated with the largest exchange in, in the world. Um, BNB, however, has been OK. And we see that stable coins are still going up, showing that there is increased buying power. Uh, and I, I am optimistic that uh, we're not going to drop right back down below 20K like many people are fearing. It certainly is possible, but at least based on where the big money is going, you know, it certainly doesn't look like this continued dump from the whales is um, lasting the way it was 
you know, the first or, or the previous nine months before this three month stretch of flatness and stable coins going up is another promising sign there. Now, another big story is the fact that Anchor, uh, they partnered with Microsoft and immediately we started to see a mini breakout from them. Um, it, it's, it's still kind of going up as we speak. This was posted yesterday by one of our community be- members. Um, intraday gains of over 70% a few hours after, you know, after the announcement was made. And in the last 24 hours, the alts price has grown by over 40%. Um, so yeah, clearly it's been on quite a run. And you can see on-chain network growth has been sky high. So a lot of new addresses were suddenly created. This was the highest amount of network growth in about 15 months, uh, second only to one day. Um, so this was the uh, technically second largest spike here. Um, whale transaction count, you can see it just absolutely skyrocketed here in the orange. Um, and then blue is the even larger whale, is the $1 million plus transactions where orange is $100,000 or more. Um, so yeah, between that, it definitely looks like this uptick is supported. And um, as long as this partnership continues to look solid and, and everything is going as planned, then I think this is a, a very promising sign. Um, and one other thing I wanted to show is the trends of buying versus selling. Tip, typically, when we see the red bars really high, that indicates a lot of people fearful, and that usually associates with bottoms. And then when it's really high blue bars versus red bars, that's a sign of greed and uh, indication that people are a bit too euphoric about the markets. So you can see here, this was a huge red bar, obviously a blue bar too, but the red bar was neck and neck with blue. And that really indicates more fear than greed because there's usually like a three to two ratio, as you can see between greed versus fear. So when fear is pretty much right there with greed, it's a bottom signal signal more than a top. And we can see back on February 13th, uh, when prices were starting to slip again after the you know the euphoria at the end of January, uh, suddenly it bottomed out and went sky high again, and we had another huge leg up. Then we started to get a bit euphoric here, and that was a top signal. Then we had one more bottom signal. It's pr- probably pretty hard to see because it's these are really slim bars, but this red bar here was really standing out right at the bottom as prices were slipping and people were saying, okay, we're going back to 20 K and then boom, we jump up again. Um, so as of now it's pretty average. It looks like as of today, um, this is a pretty typically sized buy bar, pretty typically sized sell bar. And we're going to have to see which one starts to make some separation. If the red bar starts to creep up, get ready because that increases the probability of a rise once again. And we could see another 25 K push. Um, But yeah, as of now, sentiment looks pretty neutral. Uh, I looked at funding rates earlier, maybe a slight short bias, which is good. Uh, That means that as far as where people are putting their money, uh, where their mouth is, it's more going toward betting against the markets, which increases the chance of a rise. Um, And then partnerships like Anchor, I think, are really interesting for altcoins. Uh, So pay attention there because we've, we've got a a lot of interesting stories between that and BUSD and uh, the new Coinbase L2 initiative as well. So that's what I got. Yeah, no, I'm curious, what do you see right now with the um, the whole AI wave that you know recently happened? You know, it seems like recently this was all the hype with Fed and, you know, plenty of others. And it seems like now they're kind of, you know, cooling off a little bit. And I'm sure you kind of see this on the sentiment side as well. Yeah, absolutely. We've got an AI project uh, watch list here that we can check out. And if I go to infographics, I'll just add a quick price bar chart sorted by largest market caps. We see that over the past 24 hours, there's actually quite a bit of gains going on. Uh, But over the week, uh, a lot were actually dropping off. And then if we zoom out to 30 days, yeah, I mean, they're still up a ton over the past 30 days. So it still looks like there's a lot of optimism surrounding these types of projects in the sector. So um, especially like image generation AI up 255% past 30 days, the graph 75, singularity net 120%, plateau 
131. So, yeah, I mean, I haven't seen anything to show that the rise of the AI projects is done or anything. I think, you know, over the past week, we clearly saw that things have cooled off. Uh, but, you know, just in the past 24 hours, they're heating up again. Um, you know, development activity among these AI projects, if I can load that. Just a moment. Yeah, so I mean, Ocean, the graph, these two are kind of head and shoulders above the others in terms of projects that are actually being worked on. Uh, and they're the 163rd and 43rd largest market cap assets in crypto, respectively. Um, but that's always a good thing to pay attention to if you're trying to pick which AI project you want to get into. Start with de development activity and go from there in terms of some of the other on chain and social metrics. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, I think that's all we have for this video then. Right, Brian? Yeah, I think so. Uh, always good catching up, Trevor. Uh, we will yeah, absolutely, likewise. absolutely um, do this again next week. And as more news topics come out, you know, feel free to, to leave comments in the in the uh, YouTube section here to tell us what you want us to look at next. And we'll be happy to sort of focus in on that for next time. Definitely. Definitely. Anyways, guys, that's all we have for this one. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye, guys. Take care, Trevor.